Should have the old Zora way about this Betsy Peckham was it VS, the half buggered one. There's the three Googled cells that came out of it. They weren't uh I was only holding a 15, 16, 17, 18, so it makes sense those three definitely were dead. There's some good dinosaurs there. Here's one particular head of that cell. It's kind of a bit leaky, so I didn't use that one. But I just gave them a quick, quick brief zap, and they seemed the whole charge. That's how I checked it before I um, installed them in a dispatcher pack. I also made a few more improvements on my ZVS. So it actually wasn't the capacitor that was smoking. My wires originally, how I had them spliced in, they actually melted together and shorted together. I've already thrown half of it out now. I didn't get a video of me actually rebuilding it, but... Look at how I soldered it. You can see there it's actually bent. The sharp corner where the heat shrink was. The wiring's actually covered through. It's actually melted here. That's actually severely underrated, that wire. I've got more here somewhere too. Uh, where's the rest of it? Here we are. This wire is so underrated. That's got more loading than this wire. This was only about a 12 volt wire from an old computer power supply, I think. The same gauge. You can see there it was soldered to the uh, MOSFET. Very um, insufficient amount of copper there. So that's heated up and pretty much acted like a fuse. The new wire is much better there. I've also re it so they're not crossing over each other. They're a lot less likely to short. So I should have paid more attention to that in the first place. Especially using those Makita lithium batteries. A short circuit of lithium batteries is a bad idea, so it's a good thing I've uh, took note of that. That's actually okay. I thought that was actually gone smoky, but it was actually the wires here, how they were. Got some more of that uh, high temperature wire and some uh, high current wire from this degaussing coil. It's hard to work with once you ship this wire, but it's, it can take a lot of current. So I put that there, M made no crossovers, nice and clear, nothing's going to short together. That should work quite well now. The flyback doesn't even get hot, that wire is perfect. In a toaster oven, so anything old toaster ovens, toasters, uh, sandwich presses you get, get this wire out of it, because it's high temperature rated and it won't melt full and short. I put a bit of glue on here as well, because now that there's other battery packs we've built, I get nice six inch long arcs and it starts to get corona around the pins there and um, arcs over, so I had to fix that. This would be really good for charging this PFC capacitor, so I'll actually get a hell of a lot more bang out of this thing now. Not a suggestion, I just got a idea I got. Gotta get me some high voltage gloves like power companies use. I reckon that'd be a bloody good idea. Just an extra safety precaution. So That'd be another good uh, safety measure I can take when working with high and playing with high voltage. I reckon we should all get ourselves some power gloves, all those high voltage geeks. Just good measure. They um they go to think almost to your elbow. I can't remember the um the make, but uh I know Power Core had some when they installed our smart meters. They had some there in the van. These are proper high voltage rated uh, rubber gloves. Why they have to wear them when installing smart meters, I don't know, but the uh, techs who did ours and the neighbours one didn't even need them, so just did them normally without the gloves. But yeah, shorting strap is a must, so this should have a lot more bang now. I should get a lot more um, out of that capacity now that this has all been redesigned and uh, improved. Now oh, let's get my multimeter out and measure this battery. They're both charging to about 20 volts, so... I'm happy with that. That's more than 18. That's what they normally would charge to when they were new. Now in a charger for about half an hour. It hasn't said it's fully charged yet. I don't think it gave it a good enough charge, did I? Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. That's pretty good. That's fully charged. I've just got to give it a really good charge to help balance all the cells out now because obviously the uh, other batteries out of the other battery pack, the old blue point jaw batteries, this is the blue point jaw battery cell, this is a black and decker battery cell that I replaced. Being shorter, I think there's a, a slightly less amp hour, so there might be a bit of balancing issues between the two, but it shouldn't bother it too much. 
Let's install the battery and have some uh, show you on camera how much improved the ZVS is. The flyback itself doesn't get very warm either. I'm quite happy with how it's uh, set up. Well, I'll just connect the um, battery packet, we'll see how it goes. That's alright. Just hit the pause button there, bit of Corona. Not bad. Yeah, it's about five or six inches long. Ooh, look at the yeah, much better. All right, we'll uh, disconnect, discharge. Yeah, that's better. No overheating. It's like a heating element, but that can it's designed to withstand the heat and not melt through, so that's good. I'm happy with that. Capacitor's not very warm either. They're obviously nice and cold, staying cold. Wires themselves. Yeah, they haven't melted much. Everything seems happy. Ferrite's not even bloody very warm either. Must have better tuned for this flyback. Not bad, it's worked out quite well. Well, it's peaking out to about 20 amps on this meter, so this is working quite well. What's that? So, peak voltage on a fully charged 40 volts, that 20 amp, I've had about 800 watts, I think, around there. So, those uh, zenas are holding up quite well at that rate. To a quick measurement. The batteries, let's get the multimeter out and measure the batteries now. It might take a while to get the uh, batteries to balance the, the new cells to fit in and balance charge of the rest, but they might flatten it at a different rate. But we'll see what happens. Yeah, it's gone down to 17.75 volts. Eighteen point eight in the second battery. Eighteen point eight three. That one is okay. It's not too bad. It could be better. Yeah, it's going down to seventeen volts now. Yeah, one of those cells I put in there might be a little bit weaker, but. They may have seen the hold their charge, you know, I've tested them before I put them in this bloody battery pack. Either way. It's a lot better than what it was. Good enough. I've got plenty more to rebuild them if these batteries ever die again. I think they're a lot safer too than the lithium batteries. If something was to uh, short out, then uh, go short in this circuit. Yes, they yeah, might pop this actually. I won't play my PFC capacitors yet. Can't be bothered, so let's just pop this. Okay, the old bellows box has come out to play. Just in case this thing jumps and shorts the wires out. Don't want to hurt my Variac, so this is all done for protection. Besides, the power costs nowadays are pretty damn high, so I still have, can have plenty of current to pop things, but not chip breakers and pull ridiculous amounts of currents. But when this carbon tax is scrapped, hopefully, power price will come down a lot. And I can start having some fun again. And do more pop like this more often then when the power price has come down. Yeah, not very good, see? Only pulling an air from the mains. Alright, more ballasts, more ballast power, I'm plug safety first, more ballasts needed. Each one's a bit tougher. Oh yeah, MOT comes out to play. Haven't played with that one out for a while, so... Alright, mic goes to there. These and these haven't played with these uh, 240 volt mains popping stuff for a while. There's a power price, this is why I haven't been doing it. Yeah, that's 30 now, so 
leak that last time. Plug safety first. It's moving around all over the place. Need more power behind it. There we go. Try again. That's 280 volts. Full range on the valley. Yeah. Those uh, vice strips obviously aren't heavy enough to actually weigh that thing down properly. Safety first. Alright, what else could I try? This motor is a bit tougher than the last one. Isolation transformer and Variac. That's a better way to do it. Variac and zero. Okay, doing that, it's not pulling much at all. So, but that commentator was heating up, so I think the MOTS will do it. The MOTS definitely the best way to go. It takes longer, but it works. Oh, the other MOT. There. Bit of inrush. Stick out just so I can hold it with it. There we are. Pepsi pop here. What a magnetic field. Hey, damage a commentator. I guess I don't want to die so easily. Let's just mechanically damage this one. Let's mechanically damage it. There we go, half pipe and winding there. Hot, you can smell it. Have a bit of talk. Well, the output of a mod's got plenty of talk. Even that it feels pretty much gone. Here we are, getting noisier. Mmm, rice and commentator of anyone, you can smell it. Mmm, -mm, delicious. Smell it while thing away. There we go, I might assist it now we've got damaged combars. Yeah, there we go, damaging it did help it a bit. Unplug safety first. Just want to check the little mop. Unplug safety first. Let's just check this little mop. Yeah, it's okay. A little Panasonic, little 600 watt mop doesn't seem to mind this ballast. It's good. I'm making sure it's not getting too up, not getting too up there. All right, back on. Full range on the variac again. 
So what about 90 volts? Full range. There we are. I damaged a warning now. Now I've got sparks on both sides of the commutator, on the winding end and the commutator end. Sparks of both ends. Bonus. That might talk now. On this one. What a guy. There we go, open windings, and it's arcing through the other side where I've opened it now. There we are, I'm out of anguia. There we are. Don't go now. Don't go now. Finally killed it. Pop. Power off. Unplug safety first. Yeah, something clicked. That was, uh, I think, a thermostat in the header, actually. Might have been. Or right, unplug safety first. I will observe. Yeah, it might be hot, but not dangerously hot. Have a close look at that motor. Unhook that. Unhook that there. And it came off. Here's my damage. Causing some shorts. Did help with the overloading process. Not bad. Those plastic brush holders are seen to be holding quite well. Alright. Slightly shorted commutator where I put the uh, chicken stick and ground it down. I rewired this and we'll go again. Yeah. Oh, this thing's spinning so the, uh, the mop doesn't have a load. Yeah, that clip was just this lead coming off. a while to kill these things. There we go, 240 volts. So that's how long it lasts in 240 volts instead of 280. Obviously Mark 11 transformers are inductive. So turning more voltage will just burn them out even more. So 
It's not going to do it much good running a 240 volt mod. It's barely designed to have a run on 240 volt, running on more than 240 volt. So. Well, that I mean it puts the, the, um, the way to design the mod to design it so it burns out quick. So you don't want to, um, there we are. You don't want to be over, um, overwinding it, uh, overpowering it, you really care about. It's Googled. There you are. It's YouTubed, as some would say, but... Turn that down. Unplug safety first. Unplug that safety first. Just check the mic. Oh yeah, it's hot. Too hot to touch now. But it hasn't done any damage. Have a look at the primer there. Yeah, not too badly damaged. Yeah, you don't want to put 280 volts through that for too long. The amount of turns in that primary is probably around about 220, I reckon. To put short um, of what the actual mains is rated. Because they say check the design. Yeah, as I hit it, see, I took the wiring off. Yeah, you didn't want to burn out with um, regular electrical mains, so I had to have um, improvised mechanical mains are burning this thing out as well. So mechanical carnage helped assist with the electrical carnage. There we are, some electromechanical carnage for you. Anyway, that'll be enough for now. Thanks for watching.